Well, hello, friends. Welcome to week two, Esther, the Influential Women. This is your leader video, a little bit of encouragement, something to think about as you are meeting up this week with some girlfriends. Maybe you're mentoring someone, or maybe you're just learning how to lead yourself spiritually in this season. I am so excited to encourage you with something today. It's called Setting the Table. I want to read you something out of Philippians 1 6. It says, Being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. What I love about that verse is it just is this reminder that we are all works in progress, that God is not done with us, and that he spends our entire life as we take this faith journey with him, sanctifying and making us more and more like him. So as we step into groups with other women, we have to recognize that everyone is in their own journey. We're all at different places in our journey with God. Some have been walking with God for a very long time and their faith looks a little bit different. Others are just getting started. So keeping that in mind, our role as leaders is basically just to set the table. That's what you're doing when you're opening up your home or you're meeting at a coffee shop or you're just taking a walk on the trail with someone. You're setting the table for the Holy Spirit to come in and move in the heart of those who are coming. It's your job to set the atmosphere, but it's the Holy Spirit's job. Listen to me, it's the Holy Spirit's job to create the hunger for that friend, for that woman, for that family member to, to eat, to grow and be nourished. So that's really good news for us that we don't have to worry about doing that work. You know, that woman that comes every week and doesn't do her Bible study, don't worry about it. That's not your job to make her do her Bible study. It's your job to be doing your Bible study, to be so excited about what God is teaching and how you're living and what you're learning that that woman steps in week three, week four, and she doesn't want to miss out. So I want to give you a few things to be thinking about as you're setting the table. What do you want to create at that table so that women feel welcome, they feel part of that conversation, and they don't want to leave? Good conversation leads to table time that surpasses our time limits that we often put on our groups. So here's, here's the first thing. You want women to know that they can come as often as, as they can. As you're studying at Bible study uh, in this season, let women know that, hey, we recognize uh, you're busy. We also recognize that we are in a global pandemic and things are crazy right now, but come when you can. And if you can't make it in person, then let's get you on FaceTime. Let's meet on Zoom. Let's do a quick uh, phone call that week. But just create a little bit broader opportunity and options for women to, to to be connected throughout the week, but to not feel guilty if they miss a Bible study. Women are guilty creatures. I am a recovering guilty Bible study attender, and we do not want to create guilt. That is not the atmosphere. In fact, people don't want to come to a dinner party if they're going to feel guilty. So you want to create um, freedom and grace. So let women know that. The second one, come as you are. Women are going to have a lot of things going on in the week to week and we want to make sure that they can just come as they are if they're discouraged if they're super busy if they're having a really hard time do what you can to encourage them just to be hey don't worry if you didn't do your homework just come anyways don't worry if you are really struggling we want to pray for you we want to encourage you but women need to know that so set the table by letting women know they can come as they are come to a safe environment Make sure your group knows that what is shared in that group is safe, that there's confidentiality that all of you have agreed to. And that includes, if you're married, that our spouses do not have privy to the information that is shared among women. I have come across some pretty not so good situations where husbands have come up at a social setting to ask a woman, you know, hey, I heard about such and such. And that woman is like, how did you hear about such and such? Well, that spouse had shared with that husband about such and such. We don't want such and such to happen in our groups. So make sure you've all agreed to that written code of confidentiality, that you're trusting each other as you're trusting God to do the great things he's gonna do through your group or through that mentoring relationship. Come for support. We know that uh, what we're creating is an atmosphere for community and connection and Bible study, but we're also 
creating a community for support. Make sure that prayer is a big piece of how you're supporting and lifting each other up throughout the week. Make sure that prayer is what you begin with and what you end with. We want prayer to be the vehicle that God works in your relationships and in your group. The fifth one is come for variety. See it as a win when your group is assembled and there's diverse backgrounds and religious experiences and, and just ways that people have come to, to faith. Keeping the Bible central, keeping prayer central is going to unify you in those commonalities, but boy, it's really gonna expand uh, who God is through the diversity of relationships in your group. So those are five things that you can think about as you're setting up that atmosphere for your group. And I just want to leave you with the verse, Colossians 1, 9 through 12. It says, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Friends, I am praying this verse for you as you step out this week to lead a couple friends, to lead a family member, to mentor someone, or even just to take some steps to lead yourself spiritually in a season that God is inviting you to through the book of Esther. Praying for you, have a great week.